the Megalogai of Yahweh Lilion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them who love to walk, breath by breath, by performing in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The only will of Lord God, the Father, which is accepted in His sight and well pleased through His beloved Son. The will of walking in the straight gate in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. To them who do such will, great and good pleasure, says the word. To such great and good pleasure, the world cannot pay you. But Christ our Lord, our God, though we walk in that straight gate by carrying his cross every day, by becoming his disciple, the Lord our God would be pleased, and nothing matters on this earth. Though the people may not be pleased, yet our Lord our God is pleased through our lives for which the grace has been bestowed upon us to the praise of his work. Keeping these things in mind, one more day being renewed in our lives, as our Lord our God leads us daily to walk breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, to be under the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, that is not only to peripatao but to march. And to march, the word to icon demands the apocalyptic revolution of the knowledge which has been given for us to understand the great will of God the Father, so that we could escape the corruption of this lust of this flesh in this world through his knowledge. In Ephesians 4.24, after his own image, teaching to us in Colossians 3.10, through his knowledge that we shall be escaped from the lusts of this flesh. And that knowledge which our Lord of God has prepared and kept for us. But for the past dispensational believers, the law was been given. And they couldn't know and realize what the purpose of the law it was. They were said to do the things. And if they would be out of those things, they would certainly enjoy the punishment. But in the church age, it is not so. Though we don't deserve, we don't earn, we don't work. Yet Lord God the Father loved the world so much that he sent his only begotten Son that whosoever believes upon him shall never perish, but have an everlasting life. The new man, the inner man, which demands the knowledge of the truth to be confirmed, for which cause we need to thank our Lord our God all the time that he has delivered us from this body of death to Christ Jesus our Lord. And though we are not worthy to receive it, Yet he has made us to understand that we are come to such kind of a great assembly of the Lord. More righteous things than the blood of Abel which it could speak. And if that could speak, the people on the earth, if they could not be saved, that is what the law. And how much more it should be through the Spirit, what he talks now in us by the completed canon of Scripture. The, Lord could tell, the law could tell us that the Lord God is a righteous church. It tells us that what we ought to be. But what does it tell me that Lord God is, except 
that he will not have unrighteousness. This is the law. It does not tell to us that Lord God does not have unrighteousness. In him is always the truth. In him is always the righteousness. And then it says, it tells me that I am to love Lord our God. But it does not tell me what the Lord God is that I am to love. Thus in the church age, we have been said in Ephesians 4.24 and Colossians 3.10, being made after the image of his own glory, we need to renovate the standards of our thinking according to his great, infallible and inherent word of the Lord our God. So the law says you are to love him, and if you do not, you will be punished. But it tells me nothing of what he is, that I may love him. Now coming to the time of this church age, what we are. Therefore in Revelation chapter 18, we have some great things to learn. We cannot be called as the Babylon which has been fallen. But rather in return, we have to be the people where the word of the Lord of our God teaches to us. The great kinecatesis of the church age. The true work of Lord's hand in this church age. Under this great kinecatesis of the church age, He has prayed for us that we are the people who have kept His word. He has prayed for us that we have been given the mind of Christ to reach the perfection like Christ. He has prayed for us so many great things that if you die without knowing them, it is your pure fault. It's absolutely your fault. There can be none who could be claimed on that except your own ignorance and arrogance not to know the truth. So coming to the point of the gospel now, it tells us that you have not loved the Lord of God, aliens in the mind of Christ, but yet aliens in the mind of God the Father, but through Christ made close to be one with the Lord through the work of him the blood which he has shed for us and the word for blood that is nothing but the death of a substitutory spiritual one and the two deaths what we read in Isaiah 53 being performed on the cross the Thanatos and the Necros it tells us that the gospel that we haven't loved the Lord but Lord God has been loving you all the time the same passage what we can read in Ezekiel 33 there is no pleasure for the Lord of a God in the death of the wicked and furthermore that which is a starting point for our soul that though we are ignorant and arrogant and we are not loving the Lord yet he loves us and Lord God has loved us when we did not love him and when we get new thoughts and desires which is simple the effect may be upon our consciousness. It has to be getting into the light, which has to see and judge all the sins only in the light. This is what the righteous standards for a believer which ought to be. In Christ being made righteous, who is our light, confirming to the image of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and we being the temple of Christ, says the scriptures. Yet, if we do not see these things in the light of the word of the Lord of our God to judge in our consciousness, what are this great work of the Lord which we need to judge in the light? And we need to find that this love of Lord God has sent Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ coming in the same love. God does not say, I will help you to love me, but he says, I will love you. And then you cannot get rid of that sin in the flesh, but I will love you. And what the law could not do, in it it was weak through the flesh. Lord God sent his son so that he condemned sin in the flesh. And where did we condemn it? In the cross. And now we have been pardoned, we have been free. We see the love of Lord of our God. And when we have got into this terrible condition of death in sin, in the flesh, Lord Jesus Christ has always been there. And it has been condemned, even the last enemy, death, being destroyed. When a man has seen what he is, looked at as a responsible one to God under the law, he says, O oh, wretched man that I am. But then he sees that Christ has been there and done it all for him. He can say, I thank the Lord of a God through Jesus Christ, our Savior. 
So this knowledge which has been given for us demands to walk breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Demands reckoning ourselves to death, to this flesh and yield. That is what daily growing up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, in the knowledge of the word of the Lord of our God. That is what we need to yield. And keeping these things in mind, what we are, why we cannot abide ourselves in the flesh. Because in Isaiah 43, 12, we find, I Nagad, I Yasha, and I Shamba. The Nagad work of the Lord of God has preserved and kept for us in eternity past the teachings of His will. The people that we are, I Yasha, learning some important lessons in Revelation chapter 18, because of Hebrews chapter 12, we need to consider the praise of His glory. Prayer to that, dear brethren. We shall have a word of prayer by the confession of our sins through rebound. Because nothing on this earth is more important than to claim the time, to redeem the time to the praise of His glory, breath by breath. The greater the time we spend in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, learning and performing the will of Lord God, the Father, all the time in our life, the greater our life could be to the joy of His praise. If our Lord of our God is pleased by our holy manner walk of life, if our Lord of our God has not been grieved or squelched or waxed or deceived, that's the greatest achievement for you in that particular day. There is nothing more important for us than to achieve the praise and glory of the Lord of our God to the highest. There cannot be anything greater because a workman to whom our Lord of our God has sent if he is faithful in the things for which cause he has sent, says even in Luke chapter 16 in verse number 8 through 10, you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in more things. And if you aren't faithful in little things, you cannot be faithful in the greater things of the Lord. These things which are more important for us to learn. How we need to be faithful, though we have been given this little burden in this pilgrimage trip, it's not that you're carrying, it's just your evolution that you have to be available to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of truth. Loving Lord God the Father to the highest. It is just a little, little, little burden. And I've been given only little, the things of this earth. Deuteronomy 29, 29, that I've been needed. The little things, the 66 books, what we Protestants come along apart from the Roman Catholicism. This little 66 books of the word of the Lord of a God written and kept giving a greater caution of warning for you through the major and minor prophets, giving what is the divine establishment of the law through the first five books of the Torah, teaching through the poem books, particularly the wisdom books, when he says, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but the faithfulness is always an approval of the Lord. In these little things, if we aren't faithful to the Lord of a God, then in what? We could be proved that we are great. In those little things of the Lord of our God says, day by day, no matter what it is, take up your cross and follow to become the disciple of the Lord. Given many great examples like Noah, Daniel and Job. The man who preached for 120 years became the preacher of righteousness. The man who knelt three times a day and prayed unto the Lord and his righteousness came in the sight of the Lord of our God and been called as a greatly beloved and he delivered them to witness that he is an innocent one. The man Job, the four characters unique. The first one, Yahweh, the fear of the Lord. Tommy Im, and then Yashar upright and the one who eschewed evil. This many great things in the Bible for us which have been recorded and kept in eternity past. So that we can walk our life in this pilgrimage trip. Know you not when is your death. Know you not when is the rapture. But yet have you completed the work. Nothing on this earth is more important or great important than for us to carry his cross and to work and to become his disciples. And that's what many men don't understand about these things. Yet they come to the pulpits thinking Christianity is one among the religion, not knowing the infallibility of the error of this inherent truth, rise up errors in their mind. 
And yet, dear brethren, who have been saved and kept in eternity past to the praise of his glory to do his will. And considering those things to study today, we shall have a word of prayer. And come back and look what is that our Lord of God has designed and kept for us. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the pale wonders of his word. Infinitely divine Holy Father, as I'm going to share these things now, may Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. In Colossians 3.10, we have to read that through the knowledge of his word, we have escaped that corruption. Through the knowledge, after the one who has made us in his own image, which is nothing but the knowledge of his will. But when we come to Hebrews chapter 12, when Moses saw, Bible says for us, it is nothing but ekphobos and antromas. He became exceedingly fear and he became quacking or in tremor or in trembling. But we now, being dwelt in the Holy Spirit of the Lord of our God, becoming the temple of the Most High Lord of our God, indwelt by the Trinity, we are not trembling to know what is our origin. We are not trembling to consider what is that our Lord of our God has designed for us in eternity past to be the kinekitesis? What is that our Lord of our God has called to become the little Christ as Christian when he calls us? And what is that the people who have been called as Christians? These were the men who made every day the disciples in Acts chapter 11. The disciples who have been called over a year of teaching the doctrine of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into the mind as Christians. We are not like the Old Testament law. We are something now, the new law. The new law constantly to be under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, constantly being demanding for us that we need to be under the pleroma influence of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Constantly, if ever you live, you live in the Spirit. Then you live in the Spirit, you walk in the Spirit. If you walk in the Spirit, in Galatians 5.25, it says you need to march in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. These things, Moses, what he claimed to look. On the Mount Zion, when he looked upon the Lord of God, he became Ekphobos and Entromas exceedingly fearful and exceedingly trembling. The same thing we can learn from the lesson of Isaiah chapter 6. When he heard the voice of the Lord of a God, when he saw the doorpost, the unanimated things, which don't have life in them, they shake at his voice. They fear greatly than what we are not able to fear today in our presence of the Lord's will. For which cause he has made us to be the temple of Christ. For which cause he has called us to be his kind ketesis. For which cause he has made us purchased through his precious prize. Therefore we need to glorify the Lord of our God in our flesh. This is not our own. We have been bought with a great prize. Don't ever think that this body belongs to your own and you can do many things in this flesh. Not at all. Dear brethren, this great church age, when we read in Hebrews chapter 12, should give us a great significance. Though we have to go back to the eschatological events and look what our Lord of God has says for us in Revelation chapter 18 in comparison to Babylon, Babylon that has been fallen. What was Babylon? And what we are now, the church? If Satan could proclaim against us and if he could say, Fallen, fallen is the church age because I have made them to drink the sins, because I have made them to drink the wine of my fornication and prostitution. The man who can find in the book of Jeremiah, he says, I have been demanded by the Lord of a God to make these nations to drink the wrath of the Lord. Not we, the church age believers, drink the wine of the fury of this old sin nature being influenced and making to be greater thrill by the energy of the old sin nature being operated, having to put in your mind the thoughts of cosmos thinking, the cosmos thinking by satanic nature, the origin of sin, the mischief of all the sins, 
is Satan. And Satan loves to sponsor and to back up your old sin nature all the time. But we are now being said in Christ, earlier being in darkness, but now we are in now, now in light. The old sin nature cannot have any influence because the flesh has been condemned in Christ. We have been crucified in Christ. Are we crucified in Christ? That's the problem. If you haven't loved to crucify yourself in Christ, then you can never understand what is the meaning to be resurrected in Christ. Not able to perform your duties, which has been so much essential as a Christian, as a believer in the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ to be. The fellow men who are unbelievers who have been perishing, you walk, you love to walk in the standards of such fellow men. And not able to walk in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You love to cheat. You love to deceive. You love to be fed upon the curses. And being calling yourself as Christians, walking more aliens than the standards of unrighteous gains. So we find in Hebrews 12, when Christ our Lord our God says, which is more exceedingly fearful, which is more exceedingly to be trembling one, when he saw that and he feared, but he says now about us, what we are in Christ. But you have come now, number one, unto Mount Zion, the city of the Lord of a God, the living Lord of a God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and with ten thousands of angels. One by one we need to look. The Mount Zion, the city of the living Lord of our God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and your company of innumerable angels. And from there on he says, coming and moving to the church. Because verse number 22, the description of the Israelites, what we can look, what they saw. Coming to 23, an universal convocation, Panugarai, which is nothing but a general assembly. And this is what been translated Panugarai. And this Panugarai, a general convocation, which many people truly think, what is it all about? General convocation, Panugarai. The standards in which this infallible and inerrant word of the Lord of our God has been penned and kept always demands exegiomai. Without taking proper knowledge in the process of exegiomai, you can never look the real standards of his word. The word Panugarai meant to say, it's a public festival assembly where the people gather to celebrate their own solemnities or the people as a mass meeting or a universal meeting come to celebrate their great luxurious standards of life. That is like the public games. Now in the church age when we apply this Panugaria, this is nothing but for us to understand. Lord of a God has made every believer being purchased in Christ to enjoy to come to that great convocation because every believer is a mature one. Every believer has been given these great standards of truth. Every believer cannot have excuse to say, I don't know this, O Lord. Therefore, we have been said in 1 Corinthians 2, 6 and 7, we communicate this doctrine among them that are mature, that are perfect, that are telelias. And why we can call, how you can say that you are mature, how you can say that you can communicate in these standards, because of this general assembly of the word which has been called as Panugarias. Or a great thing it is for us, Panugarias. We don't turn, we don't deserve yet our Lord of God has qualified for us in those standards. Therefore in First Corinthians chapter two in verse number six we read that Howbeit we speak this wisdom. What is that wisdom? Sophia, this Panugaria. 
because of John 16 25 our Lord of God said the time is going to come and we shall no longer communicate in the thumbs pertaining to parables but we shall communicate plainly boldly what it is the mystery doctrine Colossians 4 2 in comparison to 2nd Timothy 4 2 when our Lord of God says through Apostle Paul preach the word Kerusothon Lagan what they have to preach Colossians chapter 4 verses 2 through 4 teaching to us mystery doctrine mystery doctrine communicate this great mystery doctrine that's what we need to preach therefore this Sophia this wisdom what has been given for us that what we talk and where we teach under the people of Telelias which is brought to an end which has been finished there is nothing that you need to say that we have to at achieve we have to at move for perfection no in your standards there could be nothing perfection for you than to give or to be indwelt by the Trinity of Lord God the Holy Spirit there could be nothing perfect than that which we have been demanded to be in the church age as we have been said know you not that you are the temple of the Lord that means that's the perfection what else could be there and this creation when you can look the creation itself every work of the Lord of God is so magnanimous so great so vast that there is nothing to be added for it he has made everything beautiful in his time says the scripture but the people failed Satan fell because of its ignorance to fear the Lord of a God and it thought it can become like the Most High God and fell for arrogance not having complete cognizance the Creator it thought because of its great standards though the being replaced by the four cherubs or one cherub being replaced by the four angels the four beasts were the revolution calls that it thought it could be a mighty one but it is just one among like the way how the Gabriel was how the Michael was and it thought in its beauty it could be great and how beautiful it would have been when our Lord of God has made it flawless if it was not such a kind of a great beauty how would it have taken one third of the angels with it by that what do we learn we learn that everything what our Lord of God has made is perfect it's, it's absolutely beauty the same standards what we can look in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit for us in the church age as well when it trains and teaches to us look upon the nature what it is he has designed look upon the beautiful waters what he has made look upon the plants and the trees how it is he has made everything in his time he has made it perfect so that there is nothing you can add to it the same thing he said on the cross tetelestai it has been finished and the word tetelestai what we read the first half has been done the second half which we need to complete it and the praise for it is already it is tetelestai it is completed the prize has been already or already paid Therefore, he says in 1 Corinthians 2 6, Howbeit we communicate this wisdom among them that are telelios, that are perfect, that are completed. There is nothing that you can add for it. The same thing he further describes in Ephesians 4 12, the word katarisman. The already the perfection process has been made, but you now have to go through that process of perfecting. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, this is what we wish, this is what we pray, your perfection. And the word should be more specific, catharsis. The means has been given for you and the process which you have to achieve it. The way how you have to be led over there. And these things are most important for us to learn. What is the process called as catharismon? What is the process called as catharsis? Therefore, he says, we are being brought to an end. There is nothing that you need to complete it. You have already been made perfect so that the prayer also being made for us in John 17 6 that we have kept his word what a privilege it is and this word for what we have been called and we have been said for us that we have been fully grown adult we are of full age we are of mature we have been grown in mental character we have been grown up in spiritual character first and that spiritual character of growth is what Christianity emphasizes the renovation of the standards of your thinking is what Christianity emphasizes all the way. 
so that when you're having your perfect spiritual growth your mental growth is perfect and your mental growth is perfect then you know this marvelous physical anatomy of the Lord of God's creation you know what a beautiful creation a man is in the present world including the secular one men who love to do business with your flesh inducing fear in your mind they're just spoiling the standards of which which has to be for your flesh this flesh which our lord of god has given is such kind of a beautiful one though we go through this pilgrimage trip in the temporary life of this earth it has given for us much more than most to be needed in this flesh he has given for us to enjoy the right salvation. He has given for us to enjoy the right mind of Christ. At the same time, He has given for us the right woman and the right man. To have such great valor and vigor that there is nothing on this earth could alter that. If you're having first right, your personal love towards the Lord of our God, then you can prove your impersonal love towards all mankind. But your personal love has been failed. You cannot know the effects of your thinking which is causing upon your body to happen. Lord of our God said long back, only believe, only believe. But the problem with us is we are two minds. Because we haven't seen the full glory of the Lord. If you have seen the full glory of the Lord of our God, you would wipe out the other mind. The double mind will never be in your life. The world may say your heart has failed, but the Bible says, though your heart may fail, the Lord of a God is your strength. If the Lord of a God could be your strength, then your heart, though it may be failed, it will work. That's what only belief, only faith. Walking on the way, and if you can say a big mount has fallen, and if you have a mustard seed of faith, you can remove that. Any illness in your life, not that you require some miracles or healings. The Lord of God sent those apostles to perform those things because it was a time when the doctrine of that authority to be established, prior to that, these signs were needed. The return of the 70. And they were so happy and joyful that Satan trembled at them, at the authority given to them. But now we have been indwelled by the Trinity and yet you are, you are being trembled by Satan rather than trampling Satan under your feet. That's how the false teaching is all about in our pulpits. The men who come to say about their miracles, the men who come to say about their healings, the men who come to perform about that. The temporary spiritual gifts which have been seized is 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Yet the people love to perform those deeds. The greatest healing, the greatest work and the greatest thing is nothing but the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That's why we have been said you have been made perfect. We communicate this wisdom among them that are perfect. And how many days more these agents of Satan will divert your mind from the true issue known as doctrine. Doesn't Paul itself, when he says, I couldn't pray for my dear beloved brethren, Apopadipus, who was nigh unto death. I could not do the things pertaining for his healing, but I prayed for him. Why does it happen so? Because the authority given for them to abide in the standards of his word. The authority given for them to look upon the establishment of their sent as apostles. When it has been achieved, we now in the church age establish as pastor teacher through the communication of his word with proper exegesis, isagogics and categories and with the proper expounding of the scriptures. The same thing he did. He wrote them the mystery doctrine. He wrote them the pastoral epistles to teach, the dying declaration of his chapters in Second Timothy, to teach Kerusoton Lagan, the time will come and the people will not endure own Bible doctrine. They will go back to look upon their own itching ear pastors, those pastors who love to grab you and make you to be sweetie coated with sweet sugar coating. But when the time comes of the great examination of the Lord of a God, not being properly built upon proper rock of foundation, but being built upon sand, those things daubed with untempered mortar will certainly fall off. These are foxes in the holes. 
And this pastor teaches are dumb dogs. Do you know why? They haven't seen the true fear of the Lord. That's the problem, to look upon what it is. It is not that you're going to get visions or dreams so that you can say you're looking upon the true fear of the Lord. Do you know what it is? To get upon the true fear of the Lord, to look upon the right fear of the Lord of our God, it demands in our life a proper dedication. It demands a proper inculcation. It demands that you need to know we have been not of the world, but we have been sent to the world. It demands that we have been risen with Christ so that we need to seek those things that are in the heaven, not the things on the earth. It demands that we are the church church believers because we are the kinekitesis. It demands that we need to know our life is completely situated in the Lord's grace forever and forever. The Lord of God has given you such great perfection standards. To tell about these things, dear brethren, the kids who do not know the value and the importance of the Bible while they are kids, when we send them to Sunday school, we notice that. They tear the Bibles, they tear the pages. They do not know the importance of that, that's what we say, till they could reach for a certain age. When they could reach to that age, then they will know it's Bible. We need to do not so like that. We cannot tear the pages of it and let's keep it as a secured one, as a treasured possession of us. But the time gap, what has happened? The time gap, what our Lord calls for us in the serious things of the Bible doctrine is milk. As a kid, you threw the Bible. As a kid, you taught the Bible. Now, many being kids are throwing out this great mystery doctrine of the church age. They are throwing out that they are perfect. They are not able to seek and search and understand what a great burden that has been laid upon their shoulders. They are just exchanging for some pieces of bread or some handful of barley this great, unique, true, spiritual, great life in Christ. As we have been said in Deuteronomy 5.24, we have seen the glory of the Lord, we have heard the voice of the Lord, and yet we live. What is that life? They are living a true life, Kea. They have begun to live a true life. But we, the church church believers, though much has been given for us and much has been expected from us, and this much is nothing but very less in the sight of the Lord. That is very, very, very little few things. Yet we aren't faithful in holding fast to the integrity of such teachings in the Bible doctrine, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Then how do you think you can sustain in communicating of this great mystery doctrine? How do you realize it not that you have been catarismon? Because you haven't known that you are a catarismon, thus you love to look upon the standards of cheap substitutes. Therefore you go for miracles, therefore you go for healings, therefore you go for tongues, therefore you go for every mannerism of cults which is hindering you not to look at what you are in Christ. That's the strategy of Satan. Satan loves to always make you to blind your eyes, not to know what is the truth. Now you know that there is nothing we need to want, there is nothing that we need to be requiring or necessary for our completeness in Christ. There is nothing. Yet Satan says how you can be perfect because you have flesh in you. But the word of the Lord of God says, put to death the flesh. Why you want to say that you are still having flesh and you cannot be perfect? Because you love to do the deeds in darkness still, that's why. You haven't put to death, you haven't killed necrosate, the old in nature activities, because you love to lie, you love to be cunning, you love to be every mannerism of cult on this earth, in the sight of these unbelievers. And what the Bible calls for us, we are the kinekitesis. What does the Bible demand for us? We are the completed one. There is nothing that could be wanted for you to complete your perfect, your perfectness any longer. There is nothing. Everything has been made. Everything has been given to the highest, to the praise of His glory. The things that have been given for the Lord's work and for the Lord's will to the highest. There is nothing wherewith you can think you have been absolutely needing something or needed something to perform. You have been given the most. You have been given the best. You have been given the highest. And the world cannot know what these things are. But we, the church age believers, 
in the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, can truly know and truly learn what we are in Christ. And that the problem with us is, we haven't sought to look the truth in Christ. We are still seeking out our own lustful patterns of the old sin nature to be performed to the highest. We are still searching out those things which are not even worthy to be thought of. When you have been said, you have reached already the 100% and yet you say, I haven't in begin still the 1% because I haven't known. And what the scripture says for us in Ezekiel 34, 11, As my flock, I shall seek it out. I shall search it out. In comparison to John 8, 47, what our Lord of our God says. Those who are of the Lord of our God, they will hear this doctrine. But they that are not of the Lord of our God will never hear this doctrine. Because the one who need to hear this doctrine, Bible calls them to become the technon believers. The day by day coming and carrying their cross and following my Christ. The technon believers to the highest. That's what the Bible calls. If you aren't taking the tech non-believing work, if you haven't done the work of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of rightly dividing the word of the Lord of God, how will you be as a shepherd? Far less. You are not able to draw your own flock. If you are a man who are taking care of your sheep, it's like the way not even that Luke parable chapter 15 which talks to us. Hundred were there, one is lost, and he sought to seek that one. Implying that for us, every church age believer being so powerful, at trampling them under your feet with the lies of your teaching, and that how you can be the shepherd, ruling with cruelty, isn't it? Dear brethren, the church age believer in the church age, because he's been made telelios, he doesn't need, because he's want of nothing that is necessary for completeness. He has been made complete in Christ, that's the point. He has been given enough equipment, he has been given the plural of Paltima privileges to the highest. He has been given the right bona fide gift of the pastor teacher in rightly teaching the word. He has given the completed canon. Above all, he has given to you the indwelling Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And yet, the nature knows what is my Christ. It says in Isaiah chapter 1. The animals are loving to behave by obeying to their master, says the word. And yet the man, though he's been made in the image of the Lord of a God, doesn't know what it is to obey the Lord, my Savior. Human beings have become more washed than the animals, at least to learn from the ox indictment of Isaiah chapter 1 teaches to us this great things from the nature itself what we have to be in Christ this great things what we need to learn in Christ this great things through the various indictments of his creation of nature and that what is happening today in our pulpits men who seek not the right word of the Lord of a God, becoming like the shepherds, they have become ravenous wolves. That's the major problem with us. They look as if they are the flock. They look as if they are the shepherds who can take care of the flock. But they are the most ravenous wolves. So looking back in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23, the universal convocation, Panugaria. So this word Panugaria, which has been noted only in Hebrews 12, 23, for the purpose of rejoicing of a festal one. And it has been there 
to be distinguished from Ecclesia, the Church, and Sunagage. This panuguria for the purpose of which our Lord of God has called for was in the Church Age. To enjoy in the Lord's will, to perform the Lord's glory. And this general assembly for festal rejoicing, when we could realize what are we in the Lord, when we could learn what it could mean for us in the great plural of Baltimore privileges bestowed upon us. If you are not able to look and understand that you are a complete one, that you are a catarismon, that there is nothing wanting for you so that you can say you still need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but at the moment of salvation you have been sealed until the day of redemption by giving to you as an earnest deposit, Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You have been given in this great work of the Lord of God, of 1 Corinthians 12, 13, to be baptized into the Holy Spirit of work. There is nothing that you need to still receive as saying to the people, I haven't received at the Holy Spirit, as the people did in the book of Acts. But now in the church age, we read the further emphasis of the maturity of epistles in 1 Corinthians as well in Ephesians 1, which says we have been given, Lord God, the Holy Spirit as an utmost deposit to the praise of His glory. We have been baptized into one Spirit. Not that you have to be baptized and then you will be filled with the Spirit. Believing in Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, in this great work given to you, you have been entering into this great ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The marvelous ministry, what the world do not have and what we have. The world has been operated under the terms for their religion ideas about their gods. But we in the church age, we have something great and unique. Being indwelled by the Trinity of Lord God the Father, being indwelled by Lord God the Holy Spirit, being indwelled by Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our life itself is very unique. This flesh itself is very unique. Therefore, conforming to the image of His dear beloved Son, we can. We have been predestined to come to the reality of the glory of the Lord. These things are very, very unique. These things are very, very great. Many people who do not know about these things, they allow to do their own way of life. And they still believe, if that minister doesn't touch me, if he doesn't anointing me, then I will not get the anointing power of the Holy Spirit. Not at all. In 1 John 2.27 it says, You have the unction upon you, the anointing of the Lord God upon you, so that there is nothing that has been needed for you yet to go back and to be touched by such and such man. Being still blinded by the ways of your life, by your ignorance and arrogance, and that purely shows for us that you haven't loved the right word of the Lord. You haven't made the right truth for your number one priority. That's the main problem with us. Since you haven't loved the right standard, since you haven't known the right truth, since you haven't loved to come back and cross-check your life in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you're making your life as a lie. That's the problem. Therefore, refuging under lies will lead you to death. Refuging in truth, in the holiness of the Lord of our God, will give you no death. Till we could finish our work, we shall be immortals. In comparison to Enoch and Methuselah, we read, in comparison to Christ our Lord God the Father in the church, we are reading, 33 into 3 times, minimum 99 years, a plus 1 as a grace, 100 years for a believer. Because this completed cow scripture demands much. Every word when we exegeomai, for example, taking this word panagoria, this panagoria says for us, rejoicing in the common assembly, an assembly which is different from the church. You come out here to celebrate your festivals, the festivals of joy. Though we are sinners, we have been made now righteous in Christ. That's the joy. You have been penalty for death and penalty for eternal lake of fire. Christ rescued you from death and made you to be a heritance or to become a heritage for the Lord's glory by sharing his inheritance. 
He has made you to become the work and the law and the work and the power of God the Father. And he has made you to become a recipient of a heavenly citizen. So it's a joy for us to come together to celebrate. What else could be great joy for you on this earth, as long as you mind the things of this earth? No mental attitude sins. That's what simply classified in 1 John 2, verses 15 and 16. The lust of flesh, the lust of fire, and the wagon broker the kai of your life, the pride, the pride ostentation of your life. Epitome of your flesh, epitome of your eyes. That's what the best is for you on this earth. And therefore, till you could get that, you will not be happy. Summarized in these three things. But in the heavenly citizen, when we have been known we have been bought in Christ, we have been known that we have been no longer slaves to sin, when we have been known we have been free from the condemnation of this flesh, and we have been bought in Christ, therefore there is no condemnation, says Romans 8, 1 for us. When we have known that we have been called to reckon ourselves dead to this flesh, when we have been known we have been called upon to walk and to yield ourselves to Christ. What a great joy it will be for us. The details of this earth, the financial problems on this earth, working with your own hands honestly, the Lord of God would reward you that. Your unjust scales, unjust means of becoming rich will never be rewarded. Never. Making a project in the name of the Lord, and walking it not for the one to whom it has to be deserved. And making an introduction of your family names, introduction of your family brothers, rather than giving to them that they are right in the sight of the Lord. You think you are doing the work, but it will be a great curse, that you cannot understand what it will be a great curse. Therefore the Bible says, with our Lord of a God there is only righteousness. With the Lord of a God, there is only light. And those who walk in integrity of that holiness and in truth would walk in the work of Christ. And those who don't do that, they always face all the time their troubles. So we have come for Panagoria to rejoice in that great universal convocation of the Lord. We have come to the Ecclesia, the called out ones, the firstborn in the heavens, and they have been registered that every believer, therefore in John 1 to 12 we read, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God who are born according to the will of God the Father, their names have been registered. And how they will be born again? The same procedure, faith alone in Christ alone. Coming to realize what is your life, coming to realize what is your purpose, coming to realize what is your walk. Without realizing these things, you will never come to know what it is. Why have you been born? What is your purpose? What is your thinking? If you are not able to realize about all these things, then definitely you are going to lose up and end up. So the word says for us very specifically, the things that have been registered on your name, Register your perfection, register your prayer of Baltimore privileges, register that you have been called as an adult son in Christ, register that you have been called as a mature one in Christ. Tell it yours. There is nothing needed for you to reach any completeness because everything Christ our Lord our God has made it to the full. All these things. He says, number one, Panigurea, to rejoice in the general assembly of the Lord. The ecclesia of the firstborn in heavens that have been registered, that's we the church. Therefore, we find in Revelation chapter 20 in verses 1 through 5, the great words of the Lord recorded and kept for us. The words which teach to us, whose name have been not been found in the book of the Lamb of Christ. And you know what? Indeed, everyone's name has been recorded in the book of Lamb of Christ till to the point of death, the grace of the Lord to give you, that none to perish, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his will. He grants you the way of salvation. And in that way and the process of salvation, when he's teaching to us, he teaches very specifically, dear brother, to look and to perform his will. 
by faith alone, in Christ alone. At least in that dying moment, the deathbed conversion is what we call. Accept your arrogance and ignorance not to believe, not to know. By faith alone, in Christ alone, you have been saved. For by grace you have been saved through faith, says the word, and not works, lest any man should boast. At least in that moment of your death, if you believe in the Lord, you will be saved. That's the great grace, grace and the great principle and the grace of Christ. We cannot make a death to a lie, but at the moment when you believe in the Lord, that's, that is the moment itself you have been saved. Not needed to prove by your legalistical activities of baptisms. Baptism, if you take it, it's a serious responsibility that you're taking upon your shoulders, that you're going to die like a martyr to Christ. But it's not a way of salvation. It is not salvation at all. Salvation is by faith, faith, faith alone. In Christ alone. There is nothing apart from that you could be saved. Thus, we look upon these things, and every man's name has been written in the book of life of Christ. During your entire lifetime, if you fail to believe upon this gospel, and when you die, that is the moment your name will be stricken off from the book of life. Therefore, he says over here for us, your name's being registered in heaven. What a privilege it is for us to be in church age, in this intensified stage of the angelic conflict, witnessing the truth. What a great privilege it will be for us. Our names being recorded, there is nothing even the death could separate us from the love of Christ, says Romans 8, 38 and 39. There is nothing that could make a difference between the right will of God the Father to be executed in our lives because of the great pillar of Baltimore privileges have I given for us. There is nothing that you can think you are still immature, you are not grown up. Because already you have been called to that great holy convocation, Panagoria. Because we communicate this wisdom of Christ our Lord our God among them that are mature. Wanting nothing for completeness in the Lord's will. There is nothing that you can think there is something to be added for you so that you can become perfect. You as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the church age as kinekitesis, spiritual quality of a new one or of an absolute great standard. The Old Testament saints, though they might have deserved it, they wouldn't have kept but Lord our God has prayed for us that we have kept it. But we are becoming more worse than the Old Testament saints. As we read in Second Chronicles 33, Manasseh made them to become more worse than those unbelievers in their way of sin of practicing. But though we are baseless, worthless, useless ones in Christ, He has called us and qualified us that we are the people who have kept His word then how much more we need to be in Christ? Are we keeping up His word? This very word of the Lord of our God, He speaks for us in Hebrews 12, 23, says, The Panagoria, the Ecclesia of the firstborn, in the name of the heavens you have been written, and you are coming now to the Lord of a God who judges all spirits and the just ones, that is what the one who walked daily to become his disciple, their spirits have been made. Now confirmation called as perfect. We have been made perfect, but now we are giving the process of confirmation known as perfect. And how? Because of Christ our Lord of a God, the mediator of this new covenant, and the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of a Abel. And then we find over here, see that you refuse not him that speaketh. That's the main problem with us. Refusing, paris teme, that is to reject. The one who is speaking the truth. For if they escape would not who refused him that spake on earth, that is what Abel's death he is going on to talk from there on. Much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. That is the saving work of Christ for us which has been executed on the cross. Therefore we say, 
believe on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. There is not a name given for you upon this heaven or on the earth or under the earth that you might be saved apart from this great name that is my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we being the representatives of Lord's glory on this earth, calling many sons into his glory, we the church age believers have been demanded to know what it is that we are the recipients of his grace and what it is that we need to speak better things of the heaven than of the earth. The Lord of our God has said Tetelestai and he meant to say there is still the work for us to be completed through Christ and this Tetelestai process where many people are not aware they still just come to look upon the faker standards of this earth what they have been taught in the pulpits the word tetelestai it has been finished but yet the work to be completely done by us the church age believers that is to carry his cross and make disciples of all the nations when we do that work then we can say the remaining work of christ the tetelestai we have completed it but do you know very well, dear brethren, we are not looking upon this great work of Tetelestai in our pulpits, but rather we are just continuing our life as the life of unbelievers who are aliens from the plan of the Lord of our God and who are not able to walk according to the great will of Lord God the Father. But yet, dear brethren, we have been said not to be entangled once again into the yoke of the bondage of sin. If we have been risen with Christ through the knowledge of this new man, escape the lustful patterns of this old sin nature and come back to live a life, a life of truth. Therefore, dear brethren, the word which has been so much essential for us to tell us time, which has to come to the full purpose of his age by achieving that which is his goal. And when Lord of our God said, Tetelestai, it meant to say for us, it is Lord's God's ex expectation that we should be completely blameless in our work. And yet, dear brethren, how many days more you want to hang up yourself in the standards of this earth, the standards of this earth, which is so worst as we can look in revolution chapter 18 the words which have been recorded and kept for us by the holy spirit of the lord of our god long back in this great revolution given for us if we could say fallen fallen is the church age the reason is that we haven't heard the voice of the spirit through proper biblical teaching Therefore, in Revelation 18.4, we read the words, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Saying to the point of the from the heaven, Get out or coming out from her, because you are my people. Because you cannot partake yourselves or become a giant partaking of the word called as kainonias, followed by suk. So it meant to say suk kainonias. What it meant to say? Together communing. In 1 John 1 3 we read, We have come to look upon the communion of the Lord of our God for the praise of his glory. Therefore he says, There is no way that you can come in together common standards according to the mistakes of her. There are two things what she does. Number one, he says for us, Harmartia. And number two, not to the standards of Dikayasune, Adikayas. And this Adikayas, dear brethren, we need to look upon the word which says for us in the original Greek, because every word of the Lord of our God is so unique for us, and the unique character of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, imposed upon it, so that we shall not add anything to it, neither we shall remove anything from it. But teaching the right word of the Lord of our God in the right ways, and this is what our life is, the right duty of the pastor teacher which is to exegeomai and many people who love not to look upon these standards they have entered into the pulpits like a revenue's wolves 
waiting whom to devour, whom to eat, and whom to consume. So we look upon this word adikem, which is the strong Greek number for 92, which says that to injure, to act unjustly, that which results from an injustice, a crime, or a criminal act. That's what Satan is all about. Satan has been there for the punishment of the crime of the criminal act. And because of that punishment, it loves even for you to act injustice. Therefore the word says, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and Lord God has remembered her iniquities. Therefore you be away from her, do not be partakers with her. That's the problem. First of all, ignoring to grow up in grace is the major sin. After not believing in Christ, as the word says in John 16, 8, the sin because they did not believe in me, that's the number one which stands even for unbelievers. But for the believers, the number one sin is they have rejected my knowledge. Therefore, I have claimed a case for them, says Hosea 4. I am against you. I have a court case because there is no truth. The first word what he uses, emeth, no faithfulness, no word of the Lord. And yet you can be escaping these things because you are his people. That's what the word I want to say, you are his people. You have been sealed until the day of redemption. As in Ezekiel 9, we come, an angel of the Lord coming to mark upon the foreheads of those people. Likewise, you have been in the church age. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. And you have been indwelled by the Trinity. That itself proves that you have been separated from the world. And that's what it is all about. You have been separated from the world. You are his people to the highest. You are his people to the glorious. Therefore, he says, you can come out. And therefore, he says in Revelation 18, 4, I heard another angel come out saying to the people, you are not partakers of our sin. You have not received of our plagues. We cannot be the partaking ones if we are joined communication ones in her sins. And we cannot be getting into the calamities of her, the plagues of her. If you are partaking in her sins, then you are certainly experiencing the calamities of her. And is that needed for us? Dear brethren, the word, my people. The Lord of God purchased us with a great price. We are not of our own. We are belonging to the Lord of God. Therefore, he uses the pronoun, my people. The relative pronoun. But the people will come in the last times who will not end your son Bible doctrine, says the scripture. And that's the problem for us. Who oh, love not to do the will of Lord God the Father in heaven. Who love not to perform the standards of heaven. And yet the Lord calls for us in the catarismon process. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. We cannot just let go. The standards of your life in this church age, which are so great, to the silly, stupid things of this earth. And yet, live a life of hell besides called as Christian and you will live a life of hell because you do not know a disciple is only a Christian and not every knucklehead who comes to Christianity to look upon this as a religion think about this issues dear brethren the Lord our God uses related pronoun my people and we cannot be in common with the standards of this earth any longer. Look upon these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine presence of the Lord of God to the praise of His glory. Which way you want to go, you decide. We know very well 
the people will not be happy if we could teach for more than one hour. Yet, if we are not able to sustain with the Lord our God for more than one hour, what is our life? Nothing but sheer work. Every day, two hours, forty minutes belongs to the Lord, not to us. That's the tithe of your time you need to pay back to the Lord. You may give ample of reasons. Because they are your own brainchild imaginations, you will defend it. But when we stand with the judgment seat of Christ, we are answerable for it. Because Lord our God knows even the motivations behind your thoughts. Why are such you rejected the word? And the greater you reject the word, greater emphasis upon Satan in your life. To walk still like aliens, being alienated from the life of the Lord of a God, being far away from his glory. Think over these issues. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to believe to Lord God, the Father, that to believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Lord, my Saviour. That is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is so very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry us upon Lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season, because the diamond my witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond my witnesses in Valentine Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry besides nature, the entire Holy Ghost will be witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter however the chips may fall. Dear brethren, you are unique. The privileges and the opportunity given for us in the church age is very, very unique. Let's not waste our time in ignorance, but become cognizant of his word and learn the truth in Christ to the praise of his glory. Dear brethren, think over these issues. The humble plea of Bible doctrine, think over these issues. The humble plea of Christ's mind, the humble plea of voice of the Spirit. You are very, very great and unique. Therefore, we communicate this wisdom among them that they are mature. We communicate this because of catavismon you have been made. We communicate this because you have been prayed that you have kept the word. And yet why do you want to die sin unto death? Because the Lord's pleasure is not in the death of the wicked. He wants everyone to repent and come back to it. Learn his knowledge of truth, fulfilling 1 Timothy 2.4. Consider these things, dear brethren. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is for us to have fellowship with you through thy word. In thy calling, which have called for that great convocation of Panagoria. Help us, O Lord, to understand those words which have given for us in original Hebrew and original Greek and exegeomai of those words to teach to the hearers of your flock. Because, Lord, you have said you are going to search out your own flock. Yet, O Lord, we being your shepherds on this earth, for which cause you have called to take care of your flock. Father, help us to give them the right word by rightly feeding them in the right green pasture of thy truth, so that, Lord, they shall not be ashamed, even as such we shall not be ashamed, to be called thy servants on this earth. In Christ's matchless, pure, Lord's gracious name we pray, Father. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit and Eternal and challenge us for the work for which you have been called and for the great prayer of Baltimore privileges which have bestowed upon us. What else can we ask, O Lord? The grace which you have given, and upon that one more grace, and above that you have given this pillar of Baltimore privileges, that we shall be a complete weapon of thy glory on this earth, so that redeeming the time to the praise of your work, and to trample Satan under our feet, and yet we fear, we fear only one thing, O Lord, that we need to complete thy work, and that work which is our burden, and we fear to give you that honor. As you said, the fear of the Lord of God is the beginning of that wisdom. Teach us more and more of the truth, O Lord, and those people who are listening to this, help them to achieve thy goal. In Christ my soul, spirit, Lord's gracious name, praise our Lord. May Lord God the Holy Spirit and let challenge us by this message. Amen.